5 watts of power in a portable headphone amp. Well, unfortunately, not exactly. This is the iFi Diablo 2, a portable DAC and headphone amplifier and successor to the quite popular Diablo 1, which itself was preceded by the IDSD black label and signature. But we've got to talk about some of the advertised aspects of this device because unfortunately, some of them are very misleading. Back when the original Diablo 1 was released, it generated quite a bit of hype because 5 watts of power in a battery-powered portable device is pretty insane. But L7 Audio Lab measured it and found that he was only able to get about 0.8 watts of power, not 5. This could have just been a bad unit or something, so I got a unit in to test myself and unfortunately found exactly the same thing. I reached out to iFi about this problem at the time and they told me that the 5 watt spec on the Diablo was achieved using a different test methodology to what basically all amp manufacturers use, though this is not mentioned on the product page or anywhere on iFi's website. Usually, when amplifier power is tested, you connect an amplifier to a load and you see what level of power that amp can output before either reaching 1% total harmonic distortion or shutting off outright to protect itself. And if you see a max power spec for an amplifier, unless explicitly stated otherwise, this is what that number should represent. If you look at manufacturers like Topping, Hollow, Ferrum, or pretty much anyone else, and when we test products or when you see measurements on sites like Audio Science Review, this is the test that is done. This is the standard way of testing power, and it's the number that consumers use to compare the power output of amplifiers. iFi initially explained that the 5 watt spec on the Diablo was a peak power test, not an RMS test, and so I ran the industry standard test for peak power on the Diablo, which is to do the same thing, see how much power it can output before reaching 1% THD or shutting off, but to do so for just 20 milliseconds, not continuously, and still I was not able to get anywhere near the 5 watt spec. IFI then explained that they had tested power output for one millisecond, so a twentieth of the industry standard peak power test. The Diablo 2 will indeed do 5 watts for one millisecond, but for the actual proper peak power test, I only got 2.6 watts, and for a continuous RMS test, the same spec that other amplifiers use, I only got 1.6 watts. This is nothing close to the 5 watts that is claimed, and there's absolutely no indication on their website that this specification is non-standard. This is a problem because there is nothing to indicate to consumers that this claimed 5 watt spec is exaggerated and cannot be compared to any other device, meaning people are going to compare that 5 watt spec to other devices and think the Diablo 2 is more powerful, even when it isn't. There's nothing wrong with providing extra specifications like a peak power test or a transient test like this, but trying to pass off a non-standard, vastly easier test result as the same as what other manufacturers are doing is not fair to your customers or or to the competition. My personal favorite amplifier, for example, the Zale HM1, lists several power specs. It gives a normal RMS power spec, 4 watts at 30 ohms, it gives a peak power spec, 7.6 watts at 30 ohms, and it also provides a 1.5 millisecond power spec, not too different from what iFi is doing here. In fact, it's almost exactly the same, and that shows that it can do up to 18 watts for a short time. But the information here is clear. It's not listed as an 18 watt amp. And in fact, if we were to test many other headphone amplifiers in the same way that iFi is doing, suddenly your 6 watt amp might be 15 or 20 watts. The actual amount of power that the Diablo 2 can deliver is not 5 watts, it's 1.6. Although, actually, you can get a little bit more, 2.3 watts, if you use the single-ended output. Now, usually, if you use the balanced output of a device, you get twice the power, but not here. Shortly after publishing my measurements of the Diablo 2, the engineer that originally designed the Diablo told me that it was never meant to be a balanced device. It was actually originally single-ended, and then late in the design stage, it was decided it had to have a balanced output, otherwise they wouldn't be able to sell it. And so, at that point, it was too late to change things to a fully balanced and differential all the way through design, and the negative output of the headphone amp just takes the output of of the positive single-ended side inverts it and outputs that. So as a result, you actually get better performance and more power from the single-ended output. After some discussion on HeadFi, iFi did put out a statement about the situation, saying that the recent renovation of their website has led to the word maximum being accidentally omitted from the Diablo 2 product page. I personally struggle to accept this being related to a recent website renovation issue when I have email communications with iFi about this power and marketing issue on the Diablo 1, and again in recent weeks about the same thing on the Diablo 2. 
I was told back in February of 2023 that they would investigate updating the specs and product pages, but they were never updated. Just including the word maximum doesn't fix this issue at all though. It makes no difference to the fact that there is no indication to the consumer that this 5 watt spec is completely different to all other amplifiers. And additionally, there is no information or explanation anywhere on iFi's website, let alone the product page, about how they've even come up with that 5 watt result or what their test procedure is. Don't mislead consumers, be honest, and if you have a good product, you shouldn't need to embellish things. So yeah, the Diablo 2's power is actually significantly lower than what is claimed, and describing it as fully balanced is also rather questionable. Hey, Future Cameron here. Given what's been discussed in this review, we did send the video to iFi for comment prior to publication because we want to make sure that everything we're reporting on is factual. And after some discussion, iFi has now updated the Diablo 2 product page to both remove quite a lot of the 5 watt branding that was previously very prominent and also to add proper RMS power specs to the specification section. I would note that these are 64 ohm specs, not 32 ohm. You can't just double them to get the 32 ohm value. As mentioned, the Diablo 2 will output up to 2.3 watts RMS on single-ended or 1.6 watts RMS on balanced and if you're running on battery you'll get about half that those figures are when it's plugged in it's unfortunate that it took this video coming out to get this issue addressed but nonetheless it is good to see that it has finally been resolved before we talk about how it sounds though, which I will in a moment, I promise, I just want to get all this out the way first, I also want to mention gain and how much power you actually need. When discussing the Diablo 2, there were a few people saying things like, well, it's driving my Hypermancer's Vara absolutely fine, or, well, I only need to turn it up to about 10 o'clock and it's already really loud. But the thing is, there's a couple misconceptions there. The first being that you need 6 watts for a headphone like Sesvara, and the second being that you can tell how powerful an amplifier is or how much headroom is left by the position of the volume knob. Neither of these are actually true. The Susvara, with the two or so watts this will do on single-ended, will have headroom up to about 160 dB. The reason that headphones like the Susvara often sound better on higher powered amps isn't because you need or are using all of that power, but because an amp that can output up to 6 watts might not be behaving all that well and could be distorting quite a bit at half a watt, let alone one or two. Having a higher power amplifier isn't beneficial because you're actually needing and using all of that power. Having a higher power amp means that it's more likely that it can deliver the one or two watts you do need cleanly. Head over to our video on do I need an amplifier to see more information about that topic. This will indeed be able to drive most headphones without issue. It just doesn't excuse misleading marketing about how powerful it actually is. The other misconception is that the volume knob of an amplifier gives you some indication about either how powerful it is or how much headroom is remaining. And this isn't the case. The volume knob simply adjusts gain or how much the incoming voltage is multiplied by the time it gets to the output. It doesn't tell you anything about how much actual power is available. On the Diablo 2, for instance, with a 32 ohm load, on high gain, it will just outright shut off due to overcurrent protection at about one o'clock. And in fact, even with the Diablo 2 completely unloaded, so not pulling any current at all, it starts to just hard clip past about three o'clock. So on high gain, depending on your headphones, you might actually only have half of the volume control actually available to you. But many people do think that the volume knob is an indicator of power or headroom. And so many manufacturers nowadays are putting higher gain onto their products, which means you won't have to turn them up as much as other products to get to the same listening level, making them to many people seem more powerful, even if they're not. The Ferrum Ore, for comparison, is a very powerful amp, capable of delivering about 8 to 9 watts at 32 ohms, but with both devices in low gain, the Diablo 2, despite having a quarter of the power, will be about 5 dB louder at the same volume position, just because it's higher gain, not because it's more powerful. And in fact, the Ferrum Ore we can keep turning up, whereas the Diablo 2 will start to clip and then shut off. When the original Diablo was released, it lost a lot of the features that the Micro IDSD signature had, such as the crossfeed, X Base, and the built in IE match. But the Diablo advertised 5 watts of power in a portable device. It was meant to be an option for those who wanted to run really difficult to drive headphones with something they can take out and about. The Diablo 2 brings some new features and brings back some old ones, the most welcome of which is probably the built-in IE match. This is a toggle that attenuates the output of the device to give relatively lower noise and better volume control range with sensitive IEMs. 
This was particularly missed on the original Diablo because unfortunately the potentiometer used was a bit of a lottery when it came to channel imbalance at low levels, which meant that with many sensitive IMs, you'd end up with just one side louder than the other. Additionally, the Diablo is a higher gain device than most, which means that even on the lowest gain setting, with many IMs, you'll only be able to turn things up to about 9 o'clock before it gets too loud, so volume control was quite difficult. The IE match meant that you can turn it on, then you can turn up the actual volume control higher and it helps to alleviate both of those problems. But it's not a free lunch. It does increase the output impedance of the Diablo 2 from 0.3 ohms to 6 ohms, which means that the frequency response of most IEMs will be changed to some degree. The Diablo 2's lowest gain setting is 0 dB, whereas many headphone amplifiers, in fact like the Ferrum Ore, will have a negative gain setting for their lowest gain. And I mostly dislike this higher overall gain setup because it means that even on the lowest gain, for many IEMs, volume control is quite a challenge. It makes the IE match somewhat mandatory, and that's no free lunch because, as mentioned previously, it will change the frequency response of many IEMs. Without it, it's hard to actually adjust volume properly, and also channel imbalance is an issue at lower levels of the pot. There's also the inclusion of an XMEMS toggle, which allows you to run XMEMS driver IEMs directly from the Diablo. What this is actually doing is applying a bias voltage, so instead of the signal oscillating from positive to negative, centered on zero volts, the whole signal is shifted or biased to remain positive at all times. Personally, I really hope we see more XMEMS driver IEMs coming out in future. It's seriously cool tech. One more feature that many people are going to be happy to see on the Diablo 2 is not just Bluetooth, but Aptex lossless Bluetooth, which means if you have a phone that supports it, unfortunately neither Apple nor Samsung do at the moment, but many Android phones will, you can stream 44.1 kHz music losslessly, wirelessly, to the Diablo. The rest of the changes are refinements to the build and quality of life features, such as the use of USB-C rather than the male USB-A connector that the Diablo 1 used, thank you for that, and also the inclusion of these wings, which slot into the chassis at various angles, and there are some flat and angled sets, and this allows you to stand the device at various different angles, so that's a nice inclusion as well. From a purely build and feature standpoint, it's nothing but improvements over the Diablo 1. The build quality is excellent, the finishing is great, the main gripe for me is that the pot is still the same as the original Diablo, and so the channel imbalance issue remains. How does it sound then? Well, I'm a bit torn here, to be honest. In comparison to the original Diablo, it sounds extremely similar. They both have a slightly brighter or more aggressive tuning, and whilst quite detail-forward, I don't particularly find them to be all that natural or realistic. I reviewed the IDSD Black Label, Signature, and Diablo 1 together a few years ago, and back then I said that I actually preferred the IDSD Signature, not only because of the features it had over the Diablo, such as the X-Base, 3D Plus Crossfeed, and Digital Filter Selection, but also just because I thought it sounded better. It's a little bit warmer than Neutral, but I think closer to Neutral than the Diablo, and it had much improved vocal and instrument timbre, as well as bigger sound styles. Stage. It was generally a slightly less resolving, but overall much more enjoyable sound than what I got from the Diablo. I do think that the Diablo is better for harder to drive planars in particular than the Signature. It just seems to remain more tight and controlled sounding than the Signature did. But the Diablo 2 and the Diablo 1 sounded so similar that once I was done with my subjective evaluation, I had to go and look at the measurements and see what was going on. And sure enough, not only the overall level of distortion, but the actual distortion profile was so similar that it otherwise could have just been unit variation, with slightly higher third order compared to second, much lower fourth, and then generally descending from fifth onwards. The main difference seems to be that the Diablo 2 is using a better upsampling filter than the Diablo 1, with much steeper attenuation and less roll-off under 20kHz. This is quite a big jump in price from the Diablo 1, now being $1300 compared to the $800 on the original Diablo, but it seems it's mostly an upgrade in build and features. The change in sound is very minimal. And given as you can get the IDSD signature, which I think sounds better than the Diablo 2 and still has more features than the Diablo 2, for about a third of the cost, or if you want power, the Sentrance Ampersand, which has more power than the Diablo 2, and for IEM users has the option for a minus 20 dB gain setting, making volume control a non-issue, that's about half the cost, and that also I think sounds the most neutral out of the three, it's a great sounding device. It's really tough to see how with those two competitors alone, the Diablo 2 makes much sense. This is a good step in the right direction in terms of features, but I personally don't think the sound quality or value is better than cheaper devices from other manufacturers or iFi themselves. 
and the misleading marketing needs to be properly addressed. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions you want to ask about the Diablo 2 or any other gear, music, or anything at all, come and say hello on our Discord server or the headphones.com forum. I'm Golden Sound. You're watching the Headphone Show by headphones.com. I'll see you next time.